Kaplan starts now. A fundamental principle of American democracy is that when we lose an election, we accept the results. That principle, as much as any other, distinguishes democracy from monarchy or tyranny. And anyone who seeks the public trust must honor it. Hours after the race for the White House is called, Vice President Kamala Harris officially conceding the race. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Kimberly Hunt. It is good to be with you. I am Wale Ali. President-elect Trump is at Mar-a-Lago where planning is underway for his next term. Sources tell ABC News his team is preparing a list of possible executive actions he could take on day one. It includes issues ranging from the economy, trade, and the border. We are going to start the largest mass deportation in the history of our country because we have no choice. It's not sustainable. And we are going to start with violent criminals. It's been a promise from the Trump campaign, but what would mass deportation look like? To get a better understanding, we're going to look back at some of America's forgotten history of deportation and repatriation. You cannot know the contemporary moment if you don't know the history that produced it. There have been two mass deportation waves specifically targeting Mexicans. First, during the Great Depression, when 1.8 million people were deported to Mexico in what were called repatriation drives, meaning returning someone to their own country. But according to a 2004 investigation, around 60% of them were U.S. citizens of Mexican descent. Repatriation also sounds like it was voluntary. But as Dr. Ramona Perez from the Anthropology Department at SDSU explains, that was not the case. And they call it voluntary deportation. That is a rhetoric. It is a narrative that we were living during that time period that which scared us and made us feel like we had to voluntarily go back, right? We, If we didn't, we were going to be harmed. We were going to be stripped of our culture. We are going to be stripped of our resources. We were not going to have the opportunity to thrive. Then in the 1950s, as many as 1.1 million people were deported under an Eisenhower-era campaign targeting undocumented workers. But it also impacted Brasidos, those who were in the U.S. legally through the Mexican Farm Labor Program. Now, decades later... We are going to start the largest mass deportation in the history of our country. I will say I'm very worried about mass deportations. One day after the election, I asked UC San Diego professor Rafael Fernandez de Castro what the future could look like. If he will start deporting people at the speed he's, he's, he's saying he will do, it will really damage the U.S. economy. And uh, I believe we will have a lot of broken families in the U.S. and it will create a lot of problems for the U.S. social fabrics. President-elect Trump has not mentioned specifics for his deportation plan, but he has said he would use local law enforcement and possibly the National Guard. He added it was also possible migrant detention camps would also be built. The return of Donald Trump to the White House is bringing uncertainty for millions of dreamers in the U.S. Those are undocumented people brought to this country as children. And one Cal State San Marcos student we spoke to shares concerns on what the future looks like amid the election results. Just the wave of sadness. You know? uh, I have a lot of family, friends, and people I really care about that are going to be really affected. Uh, I have friends who were scared coming to campus for the um, first couple of classes because they don't know if checkpoints will be open. They don't know if these policies are going to be start going in place immediately. That is Juan Sanchez. He's a mixed status student. He has been involved in the university's Dreamers Resource Office. It helps students with free legal advice, assistance with applying for private scholarships, counseling, and so much more. Post-election, the Resource Office will focus on helping students feel supported.